Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with the next edition in my vlog series chronicling my attempts at some quasi-van nomadism. Today is now June 4th, 2018. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I am recording a little bit later than I have been trying to do lately because, well, it's Monday and that is the day that the Seeds of Liberty podcast, one of the many podcasts I do, normally comes out and I'm the one in charge of all that. So when I got to a spot to have Wi-Fi this morning, my first goal was to make sure I uploaded that uh, that episode. And then uh, I had a couple other things to do. So I'm finally getting to a record now. But since I already posted uh, that episode on Steam it earlier, uh, I was going to wait till later on to post this anyway. So the fact that I didn't get to record till now isn't that big of a deal, I guess. Let's see. Uh, number one, uh, once again, I do apologize for the sound quality yesterday. I think I have fixed the problem today. It appears that the USB cable for my mic finally started to go. Uh, I actually just recorded this once before, and I thought I had corrected the problem, but when I listened back, the same exact thing was happening, even though it seemed like I fixed it uh, during the test I ran. So I had to, I'm scrapping that wire altogether and I had to pull the wire out of the new microphone that I have with me that was designed to hopefully have some, you know, guests when I came across them actually and record with them so that, you know, I had two microphones with me, but uh, I didn't want to have to pull the cord out of the box, but when I record with two people anyway, I'm most likely going to be using my mixer, which means I'll be using the XLR cable. So I only need one USB at the current moment. And giving a brief look, it seems like it's hard to track down just the USB cable anyway. Regardless, I think I fixed the problem now, so hopefully I sound better today. Anyway, since I last left you guys, or when I left le le last left you guys, uh, Murder Dog and I were hanging out at a local park, which had a marina attached to it, which is where we stayed the night before, and Murder Dog and I were about to head into the dog park once I finished recording. Well, we did that, hung out for about an hour or so, uh, it was entertaining to watch her because she is getting a little bit older, as I've mentioned before. She's about to turn 11 next month. And, you know, it's not like she's mean or nasty or, you know, tries to, you know, gets gets crazy with other dogs who try to, like, say hello to her. But she just, like, doesn't really care. And uh, I heard a number of people remark while we were at the dog park, either to me directly or I overheard them saying that it, it was they were entertained by watching the chaos of all these puppies jumping you know and you know not not necessarily all puppies but acting like puppies jumping all over the place and like you know tackling each other stuff and rolling back and forth across the entire dog park like this whole big mess of dogs and then in the middle of it you just see murder dog just kind of trotting through like you know nobody's even there like not paying attention um i mean you know just just walking doing her thing and uh totally uh nonplussed by the whole situation um <laughs> But anyway, she um, so yeah, that was fun. We got to hang out there for about an hour or so. She got her, she got a lot of energy out. Um, if there is some background noise, I do apologize. It's getting a little warm right now, so I have the windows open as we're recording. Um, it's been colder the past couple of days, but of course now it's starting to heat up when I want to record. But you know, this is what we have to do. Hopefully, the audio quality overall is better, so you will forgive me today. Um, I, and besides, at some point when it actually is a nice day out that I know it's going to be nice for a little while, I had planned on setting up outside to record, like actually fully setting up and getting the table out and sitting down to do a, do a show. So th those are bound to have background noises. Anyway, so that's what we did yesterday. We, that's how we started our day. And then afterwards, we were going to meet up with the wife and kids, but they had some stuff to take care of first thing in the morning. So Murder Dog and I drove around. And then we decided to head up to Planet Fitness to check about getting that membership I've spoke of before because, well, getting a shower has proved a lot more difficult than I was hoping for. You know, f trying to find a place just to set my solar shower up has been has been difficult enough. So I had finally resigned myself that I was going to have to spend the money on the Planet Fitness membership just to ensure that I had showers all the time. And especially because I was supposed to bring Murder Dog to the vet today, I wanted to make sure I showered before I did that, and I figured that was my last chance, so I went ahead to go sign up for that. Unfortunately, when I got there, I did find out a couple of things that made it a little more difficult for me. Number one, apparently they don't accept cash. Uh, they also, apparently, at least what I was told by the manager, is they don't even accept credit cards or debit cards. The only way you can sign up is if you do like an automatic payment through your checking account. And as I've talked about before, I no longer have credit cards or debit cards or a checking account. So for anybody in my position, that may be a little difficult. 
now I do have my wife who has one, and I, I asked, and they said I could use hers, um, you know, since she's holding the money from the sale of the house anyway. Um, so that was a little bit of a pain in the butt, a little discouraging. I'm always, I don't know, I always feel leery when people don't want to take cash. It's like, why not? You know, like, isn't it easier to deal this way? But anyway, um, and then the second thing, and the reason, the actual reason I didn't sign up yesterday was that the manager told me, he actually let me know that, starting the next day which is now today a new set of deals was coming out because i've we've talked about this past and you know the number 20 21 whatever has been floated around when i actually went in there it was say the monthly pass for all everything i wanted was now saying 21.99 but the manager i spoke to said a new set of deals started today and he couldn't obviously tell me what they were because they weren't official as of yet but he could guarantee me that they wouldn't be any higher than they were so if anything it would be a same type of deal with maybe some extra bet, you know, the same type of money with maybe another benefit or two thrown in or a lower or a lower price on the monthly deal. Either way, it would probably be a win for me. So he suggested I wait till the next day, which is now today to actually do it. And uh, I appreciated him telling me that. And I said, oh, you know what? Maybe I can wait because then I thought about it. I said, all right, Cameron's vet appointments at 1245. And then he also told me that because, you know, they're open only 7 to 7, I think, on the weekends, but they're open 24-7 the rest of the week, that they open back, actually back opened back up last night at midnight, and that the deal was would be in effect, in effect as of then. So if I wanted to come back as early as midnight, I could come in, sign up, and get my shower then, and then go wherever I was going to sleep for the night and sleep and whatnot. So that's actually what I, could, I was thought I was going to do. So I headed out of there. I said, all right, I'll come back either later or early tomorrow morning, and we'll work all this out. I'll get my shower, and I'll take murder dog to the vet. Uh so I headed out of there and headed a little bit further north to go eventually meet up with the wife and kids. But first, I wanted to stop at a place where I knew I had good Wi-Fi to upload yesterday's video. While I was doing that, I actually got a text message from my buddy Lori, who I spoke about in the uh, last installment. And there you go, Lori. Two, two uh, shout-outs in uh, two, two videos in a row. Um, she, uh, she texted me and said, hey, listen, my house is free right now. If you want to shower, come on over. Uh, because unfortunately with her living situation, uh, some of the people she lives with are not very fond of having other people in the house, like at all ever. And they're, and one of the people she lives with is not a big fan of mine. So of course she would not want to see me anywhere around. Um, but yeah, everybody cleared out and like immediately she called, she texted me. She's like, Hey, house is free. You got two hours, get down here if you want one. So I raced down there and I took a hot shower for the first time since last Wednesday night. And oh, did it feel good. Uh, you know, I've spoke about the, the lunar shower I took the other night with the chilly water, which was refreshing and it made me feel better after a couple of days of being all gross and stuff, but there's nothing like a nice hot shower. Well, I don't actually shouldn't say hot shower, really warm shower. I don't really actually like hot water. Never, never really been a fan, but to take a, a t shower in the temperature that I prefer, um, and not have to rush through it and not have to keep turning the water all on and off in order to preserve it. Um, and to be able to scrub myself down fully. Oh, it felt so good. It was so nice. And Lori, once again, you rock. You saved my ass. Uh, on top of that, she also gave me some other camping gear while I was there because, as I spoke about yesterday, she's a big camper, um, but she hasn't been able to do as much as she wanted to when she actually prepared for a couple of trips that people bailed on her on, so she has all this equipment she's actually never even used. And one of those things that I'm actually the most excited about is she gave me this tiny-ass little stove. And when I'd say tiny... The stove unit itself is like, I don't, I, I wanted to grab it, but unfortunately it's on the other side of the laptop and I don't want to mess with anything right now. But the entire unit's only about this tall, like this big, fits in a little, uh, little drawstring bag, weighs about an ounce. And you hook it up to one of these bad boys. She, and she gave me this too, which is, uh, the jet power, uh, propane, uh, isobutane mix which is designed to heat ho hotter and quicker than regular propane so you can boil your water faster so you take that little bad boy of a stove uh flip open the prongs on it and just screw it onto the top of this and boom you've got yourself a little freaking kick-ass stove which i am super excited to try out because as i have discussed the bulk of the food that i brought with me uh was one giant 30-day supply of uh prepared meals uh, that my dad got me years ago as part of his prepping binge. And, you know, I, I had a whole bunch of those stored in the garage. Most of them were like one different particular thing. Like I have a couple of giant ones of a particular type of pasta, a couple of giant ones of, of different mixed vegetables and stuff. But he had given me one can, uh, one canister that was actually just supposed to be a straight up 30 day supply. 
So it's got a mixture of food in there. So I threw that in the vehicle with me because I was like, this is perfect. We, you know, all we need is some hot water. And I, I knew as a, you know, last resort, I could always go to like 7-Eleven or something and heat up some water in, uh, in the microwave. But I was trying to avoid that. So having this little stove is going to be great. And I can't wait to test it out and uh, let her know how it works because she's never even got to use it. Uh, I, of course, will be returning this when I'm done unless unless I manage to destroy it. Then I will be paying her for it. But either way, she will get she will get it or the money back. Um, so, Laura, thanks again. Uh, I can't wait to test this thing out and see how it works because once it does, well, hopefully it does, uh, Cameron and I will be eating a little more. Well, Ca- Ca- Cameron hasn't been eating very regularly, unfortunately. I think she's still a little nervous about this whole trip, but I'll be eating a little more regularly and uh, at least a more a little more tr- nutritious meal than, uh, you know, my random peanut butter and banana sandwiches and whatever else I snack on during the day. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, so that was great. Uh, after I had my nice shower, I drove up the block, block a little bit to go meet up with the wife and kids because I wanted to clear out of the, the house, uh, Lori's <laughs> house as quick as possible because I didn't want to get her in trouble for sneaking me in. Um, and then we got up to the park and I met up with the wife and kids and the kids said, oh, we want daddy to come play with us in the park, which meant, you know, the wife was going to sit with Cameron in the car because we were parked on a public street. You know, we didn't want to leave her there alone. And the wife offered to sit and, and sit, sit with her while I went to play with the kids. Well, sometime between us standing outside my vehicle talking about what we were going to do and then the five minutes, the, the five minutes the kids and I spent inside the park playing Sometime in that 10 minute time frame, somehow, some way, Murder Dog got a cut on the bottom of her tail, on the tip of her tail. And what I'm guessing happened is when my wife got in the car to sit with her, Cameron got all excited. Her tail started going 90 miles an hour like it normally does. And that's when the blood just sprayed everywhere. And when I mean everywhere, I mean everywhere. I got a bunch of text messages from the wife. She's like, oh my God, Cameron's tail's bleeding. I don't know what happened. I get over to the car. I can't find anything. You know, at first, maybe I thought she had, like, stuck her fan in the tail that Lori gave us the day before accidentally, but that wasn't even on because since the wife was in the car, she was able to open all the windows and the back tailgate uh, to get the airflow in, so the fan didn't even need to be on. So it wasn't that. There isn't anything in the car that I've moved around since we re- – I mean, other than moving stuff and then moving it back to go, you know, to go to sleep at night and then move it back in the morning so we could drive – Um, but other than that, everything's in the same position as it's been since Friday when I took everything apart at that parking garage and left it, uh, and and then repacked everything. So everything's still been in that position since. So I can't find what it is she actually cut herself on. We have no idea. And it wasn't like a severe, like it was enough to cause a spray of blood everywhere, but it wasn't like horribly bad. And it didn't even seem to be painful because once I started cleaning everything up and then got a wet paper towel and wrapped it around the bottom of her tail and uh, just squeezed on it gently to try to get some of the dried blood off of there and to take a good look at the uh, the wound itself, you know, and squeeze gently and then squeeze a little harder, harder, harder to see how she reacts. No yelping, no crying, nothing. Um, it's like she didn't even notice it. So it was a really freak thing, and we I have no explanation as to how it happened. All I know is I had to clean a bunch of blood off the inside of my car, and I still have to go get my hands on some peroxide because the b- blood on the back of the seats wouldn't come out. So that was exciting. Um, after we got that cleaned up and everything, uh, we went back into the park and then all of us played for a while because the temperature had all of a sudden started dropping again and it was cool enough that I could leave the windows all cracked and turn the fan and turn the fan on since I was sure that wasn't what she cut herself on in the first place. And she was perfectly fine in the car and I could see her for the most part from where we were in the park, you know, just keep an eye on the car. Uh, so we all went and hung out for a little while. And then once it started to get really cold and it started to get a little later, we decided to go out to dinner. And since we were right down the block from Lori's house, we invited her to join us. So we all went out to to do a, to a dinner together. Uh, we were with the kids. So, of course, we went to Friendly's because that's their favorite place to go. And we actually go out to eat. Um, so now we sat there, had some food. That was that was nice. And then afterwards, once we all say goodbye to, for the night, you know, Lori went back home. Jen and the kids went back to the apartment so they could get uh, cleaned up and go to bed. Uh, I decided to head out eastward to the rest stop Lori had spoken about the day before and uh, try that out for last night. And I did. we didn't end up staying there the entire night uh, only because I we got out there so early and I was actually starting to yawn already that I just... I leaned my seat back, my front seat back, just to just rest a little bit. I ended up passing out for like three or four hours. <laughs> so by the time I woke up, it was 1 a.m. and I was feeling wide awake and uh just decided not to stay there the rest of the night and you know but overall it seemed like a, it seemed like a decent location 
you know, as Lori had said, it was well lit. Uh, they do have 24-hour video surveillance, so you don't have you don't have to worry about thug, thugs coming in to bother you, except to type in blue because unfortunately, right out front of the rest stop, there's three or four parking spaces all labeled police parking only. And when I got there, there was three cop cars, two Suffolk County cops, and one state trooper, all parked in that in in those spots. Always makes me a little uncomfortable when the road pirates are around, but they didn't seem to bother anybody, and nobody bothered me for the hours that my car was parked in the spot. Anyway, um, you know, and the place is relatively new, so it's super clean. Bathrooms are super clean. They had, uh, you know, a little food section like most red rest stops do. Unfortunately, I didn't walk in there until after midnight, so they were already closed up. And uh, so I didn't get to get any of that, but I at least made use of the bathrooms. And they also, like most rest stop areas like this along different uh, expressways and highways across the country, they also have a little area for your dogs. So, you know, if you're traveling with your animals, you can let them out and let them go to the bathroom. This one I actually think is even better than most of the ones I've come across in my travels over the years because most of the places have a little section of grass they want you to use and say this is the specific area of grass for your dogs. These uh, up here on Long Island, this one actually has a mini dog run in it. So you that that's their section. You actually let them in the dog run so you don't actually have to walk them around and be close to the cars whipping down the expressway and stuff. So actually, that that's pretty cool. I, I like that deal. I mean, I'm sure shitloads of taxpayer money was wasted on this. But, you know, for what it is, that was nice. So overall, like I said, uh, for anybody else who's ever attempting this or is out this way and needs a place just to crash in their vehicle for a night... I would recommend it. Uh, You know, it seemed safe. It was clean. Um, I would stay out there again. The only problem for me is it's a little bit further than I want to travel. It's like, you know, a 20-plus mile trip from where I am currently. And, uh, you know, there and then 20-plus miles back. So it's a little bit much, especially if you're trying to save on gas. So I may not make it back out there unless I have a reason to head out that direction anyway. Then I would stay there again. Like I said, overall, positive experience. Um, just a little far from my blood and we only, we didn't stay the whole night only because I was awake already and couldn't fall back to sleep. So we started heading back this way because as I mentioned before, we had the vet appointment for Cameron today, uh, which actually wasn't for her cut tail. It was actually for a, uh, she's on thyroid medication, unfortunately, because she's getting older, has some thyroid problems and she needed a checkup for that. So we had to come back for that anyway. So we, you know, after we headed back this way and waited for, waited around for some people to wake up headed over to one of the McDonald's to uh, make use of their Wi-Fi for a little while. That way I could upload the Seeds of Liberty podcast this morning, which comes out every Monday uh, for those of you who are just following the vlog and don't know anything about the podcast thing I do. Um, But I had to make sure I got that out today, which is another reason this video is being made so late, number one, and will also be put out later today. You know, uh, like I said, uh, after the first day when I put out two of these videos, I said I was trying to get it where we had one coming out every day, hopefully in the morning. But, well, on days when my podcasts come out, I'm usually probably going to put those out first and then we'll get to the vlog. We'll get to the vlogs later. But I just wanted to make sure I got this recorded and uh, I will definitely put this up sometime later once I get back to uh, better Wi-Fi. I thought I had some here, but it's looking like the Internet connection has been kick- kicked out. So we'll have to move again to upload this. But, yeah, so... Uh, once we were done with that, I went to go see the wife and kids for a little while, and then Cameron and I headed over to the vet. Unfortunately, there was uh, some miscommunication and whatnot, and she ended up not being able to get the blood test she was supposed to today because apparently I gave her the medication this morning like 45 minutes earlier than I was supposed to, and uh, that meant they couldn't do the test at all. So we're going to have to come back again for that. But they were nice enough to at least give me enough medication for her to get us through to the next appointment because she was running low and also give us the rest of the stuff and they didn't charge us for that which was cool and they also gave us the rest of the medication that we needed that she's on anyway that i was gonna that i was running low on so now since then we moved over one parking lot we're now currently sitting in the starbucks parking lot which is next to our vet's office and that's where we're doing this recording and once i'm done here probably gonna go back and try to hang out with the wife and kids again for for a while and then uh and then we'll figure out where we're gonna stay tonight but that's about it so, again, pretty successful night. Uh, found a place that is uh, worth staying at if you are out that way or you're willing to travel a little bit out that way. I, I would recommend it. I still think I prefer the marina only because, number one, it's closer. Number two, it offers pretty much everything This the rest stop offers except the uh, food services because, you know, it has bathrooms I can use, has a, has a dog run, has a much bigger dog run there. 
and you know being closer to the kids and the wife and, and not having to travel so far and waste as much gas definitely a bonus and as i mentioned yesterday the only reason i wasn't going to stay there continuously is because i didn't want to you know draw undue attention to ourselves by having the same car there all the time but you know depending on what happens tonight we we good chance we head back there tonight because we liked it so much the first time um and if we're lucky it'll be a little less windy but still a, still breezy enough that we can keep the windows open and not have to worry about uh, sweating to death in the vehicle but we will uh, be back tomorrow to tell you how that went so thank you everybody for watching this has been abolitionist jay and uh i will catch you tomorrow stay tuned fan life baby fanarchy Peace, y'all.